Sorry, Paul and Jeremy are making me laugh. And yeah, it's just what it is. It's what it is. All right, if it's your first time here coming to the demo, let us know so that we can get you squared away. Hold on, I'm going to quickly disconnect my headphones and readjust those babies and plug it back in. Every once in a while, you get a little tangle and you're not trying to, you know, it's like Missy, Missy Elliott. We so that you get our styles tango. <laughs> Swinging like she does show. Can we get freaky tonight? Like Toto. Here we go. All right. Now we good. Now we good. Cable was tripping. Tripping. All right. Now we are cooking with Pam. All right. Let me do something real quick. I want to fix something here. And the heels are alive with the sound of music. All right, so I'm going to pop into live demo mode in just a splits as soon as my stream deck restarts. I don't know. My stream deck is tripping, um, but it's because I have it in a older hub. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Okay, so we're going to do the ECAM live demo. Um, I did want to talk about something real quick. Okay, so... Uh, I saw a comment in the Facebook group yesterday, and the person was saying, I don't even know how I can fake this. <laughs> it might be difficult. Uh, the person was saying that they were, you know, their interview person comes in low, and they're trying to turn it up in ECAM, right? And I want you to guys to fully understand how Signal works. Because this is the reason why I'm forever and forever and forever and forever preaching start with 80, right? So if you look over here on my little doohickey here, all of my guys are basically set to 80. And what that allows me to do is if there's ever a situation where I needed to turn up an interview guest, I could just crank that to 100. That's going to give me a little bit more leeway in order to come in. Now, if my regular audio, I want this to be louder, I have a slider, right? I can just crank the slider up. But the problem with just turning it up for no reason is it gets noisy, right? I mean, at this point, I can't tell what you guys hear. I'm not listening to the feed. But this probably does not sound as good as when I have it here. Because just cranking the volume up picks up the room noise, right? So if... 
if you know and the conversation was basically around when and if we know we're coming we know they're coming i actually already know they they're there because i've seen the implementation it's just not baked out yet um we are getting you know vst plugins or basically plugins that will allow you to do some adjustments to your software that's coming up in a later beta but if you turn up a signal that's not properly gain structured and see i'm telling you guys words you're not going to understand if you take a signal that you think is soft and just make it loud for no reason all you're going to do is introduce noise you cannot programmatically or in software you cannot just take a signal and just arbitrarily make it louder when you make things louder in a microphone or using a mixer or a knob on your interface the potentiometer is adjusting things in a very particular way so the easiest thing to do when your guest is coming in quiet is tell your guest to turn up their mic to the point where you start to inject noise. And I think the general consensus is people think they don't want to bother the guests, but the guests are coming on to your show. It's like somebody walking in your house with dirty feet and you not telling them, hey, hey, hey stop, 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 stop. We're going to need you to change them them feet, right? We'll wash them. We got a little towel and, you know, maybe some hand wipes, you know, like this kind of stuff here. We need we need to do something about it. We can't just have you traipsing around my carpet. Hawaii, we don't wear shoes in the house. So, I mean, there's no mud room. We don't, we don't even have a mud room. Shoes come off, period. Nobody wears shoes in the house anywhere in the state. It's not a thing. <laughs> you know, uh, in Japan, you go to some restaurants, you have to take your shoes off to walk in. Uh, so... The, the idea of not taking the time to tell the guests to crank up their audio or make sure everything is straight. And I guarantee you, I'm just going to say this. I guarantee you this is coming from not wanting to do a tech check because I believe that some people, when they do their show, they're under the impression that they're bothering the other person by making them do these things. No, you know it's really bothering the other person? Allowing them to come on your show and look bad. They will be more mad at you for allowing them to come on your show and look bad than for you to stop them and make them set everything properly. Most times when you tell people to adjust something or whatever, they're going to be happy because you're helping them look better. Um, there's about 70 of these out there. Um, Jeremy, there's legit 70 out there. Um, you can use any one. Like, there's tons. It's just, I mean, you can get any hard limiter pro plug-in, tons of fleet plugins. We, I don't know if we're putting the plugins in or not. I don't think we should. I think we should just put the implementation in and let people do what they want. Um, but, yeah. I can tell you what the trepidation has been all of this time. And if... <laughs> If you if you want to know, I'm telling you, just look at the Facebook group and imagine adding VST plugins. Just look at the type of questions that come in in the Facebook group. Uh, I guarantee you the support will not be ECL oriented. It'll be like, hey, I downloaded um, Waves, you know, Ultimate Knob. And I can't get it to work. How can I make it work? Go to the Waves group. Ask them. But it's never going to happen, right? It's all going to become our support issue. That's probably the biggest trepidation because, as you realize, Jeremy, uh, the amount of VST plugins available are in the millions, right? Some of them are solid. They're all paid options. There's tons of free stuff that are absolute rubbish. And you know what everyone's going to do, right? They're going to download the free ones, and then it's going to do something funny, and then they're going to say, we did it. And so I understand the trepidation. And this is the problem. This is why we can't have nice things, because people won't go to the proper. I mean, you know how many Roadcaster Pro questions we get? And no, none of this says road, not a single piece. But uh, we get hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of Roadcaster Pro questions. So, yeah, there's that. Anyway, let's get into the dim. Bingo! All right. So, by the way, if you have questions, you can ask those in the chat. 
And if anybody here is brand spanking new, let us know so we can help tailor the dim a little bit to you. Let me eliminate these here scenes from the last demo. Bingo. Bingo. Boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. I actually, so funny you say that, Mark. I actually prefer uh, AU plugins and more than likely, I mean, in order to do VST, you have to sort of automatically do AU plugins because AU is the uh, audio units, core audio, which is built into Mac OS. So I actually prefer AU plugins. They're just not as many because a lot of the companies prefer to code in VST because then it works on both platforms. Whereas audio unit plugins only work on Mac because of core audio. Anyway, now we're getting nerdy. Uh, you know, Scott, I have no idea. I have all three cameras right here. And you know what I don't do? I don't touch the audio offset. I just don't. Like, I, and, and it's probably off. And I don't give a uh, care. <laughs> because no one is watching my stream to see if my lips are synced. Not a single person comes to the stream to see if my lips are synced. They're coming to learn how to use Ecamm. Nobody fucking cares. You guys are tripping on something that your audience doesn't care about. So I honestly don't know. Um, Sony has always been negative four. I've never touched the Tiny or the Insta360 link. They just, they just are what they are. Are they in sync? Have no idea. Has anybody ever complained about it? No. Why? Because they're busy watching me tell them how to use Ecamm. Nobody cares. <laughs> they just don't. <laughs> it probably is. So then change the offset. But you can't offset all three cameras exactly. It's, that would be virtually impossible. Right? Uh, because there, there's UVC, UVC, and HDMI. So this setting here only accounts for one camera. Mic delay accounts for one camera. It's not, you can't mic delay each individual camera. So <clears throat> the other cameras aren't supposed to be your main cameras anyway. And if they are, I mean, whatever, you know. But yeah, the, Paul is correct. The best way to see what it is is go to squares.tv and use the calculator. Michael made a really dope calculator. A R. Dude, I swear to God, no one's ever coming to your stream and going, I can't watch this shit. His voice is out of sync. Like, seriously, nobody. Especially none of us that grew up watching Kung Fu Action Theater. <laughs> it is my personal opinion that the reason why we stress out over these things is because every one of these sidetracks and delays... <clears throat> is an opportunity to like preload an excuse to fail instead of just be happy to fail. That is my honest opinion. You can disagree with me. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, you can launch the delay calculator and then, uh, oh, you got to sign in. I'm not going to sign in right now, but I have. Anyway, you can just go to delay calculator. You can launch it. You can check out the instructions. It basically allows you to take a file. It will tell you exactly how far your drift is, and then you can adjust accordingly. Um, I record screen, what do you call these things? <laughs> uh, tutorials all the time, and it's always out four frames. All I do is, before I edit, grab the audio, go tap, 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 and then lock, start editing. And just, I don't even, you know, not even a thing. It's not even a thing. It is, it's not unusual to be loved by anyone. <laughs> It's not unusual to see me cry. Let me unleash all of these bad boys. No, you can't delete that one, can you? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, I'm just cleaning out these so that I can start fresh. All right, so let's go and make a new scene. We're going to come down here on the bottom. Click that. Now, when you first come in, uh, yeah, four frames is not even a bad kung fu movie. This is correct. <laughs> uh if I, normally when you come here, you're going to end up with purple or, or black, sorry. <laughs> but I use a, uh, <clears throat> I use an image in order to fix that. The other thing I've done is I've added a little grid, which I just made. It's a 10 pixel grid. So in theory, there's 192 squares across this thing, right? 
Because these are 10 pixel grids. I think that's correct. <laughs> I can't even, and there should be 108 going that way. If I made it right. Maybe I made it 20 pixel grid. I don't even remember. Anyway, it's uh, there's the grid. Uh, you know what? I can tell. I know how to do this. Let's do this. I don't want to capture a text. Uh, I don't even know why I want to care, but we're going to check. So I'm going to get my find dimensions. And pop this here. Oh, I missed. Uh, it looks like there are 15 pixels. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, there are 15 pixels. Okay, anyway, now I know. Let me erase that. So, if I wanted to throw in a camera, I can just doink. Yeah, I'm not going to count them, Mark. I'm not that crazy. I'm not that crazy. Uh, uh, let's go here and click on the squircle. And then there's my, uh, there's my little size doohickey there. So I'm going to put that there and pull it about yeah. Yeah. All right. Now. Because we're doing it for an interview setup, I'm going to hold down the option key and the drag upon the, and then I'll get the second version. And then if you have your snaps on, things will line up accordingly. All right. So that's about right. Just to scientificate my grid, I'm going to tap them to match the grid. All right, bingo, bingo, bango, pickle, mango. Now, come down to the bottom here and select on the text overlay. I'm just going to make it short today because I'm lazy. Oh, man. You know what, Scott? I just, uh, I just found... Uh, bad boy Bill on IG. I was checking out some of his posts. I was like, man, that's a homie from the way back. Super interesting. Uh, 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 uh. And your your new um, your new rig set up with all of your console. The console looks sick. It absolutely looks sick. It's really dope. But I do have to ask, <laughs> I do have to ask, Scott, after all of these years, why, 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 why are you still playing with GoPros? I don't know why they don't work. I don't know why they're so problematic. Um, we've never really been able to figure them out. Felicia's the only person I know who's ever got them to sort of semi-behave. And my honest opinion is I think they're scared of Felicia. She's legit the only person I had know in the whole time of using GoPros and Ecamm that ever got them to behave properly. They've always been a pain in the butt. Uh, whereas, you know, I take something like the, um, I don't even know what the heck I did with it. This uh, Insta360 X Pro, I literally plug in the USB cable and it just works. Uh, the other Insta360 that I have, the RS, which is here, which is mad old. This is like three years old. I legit, I just plug it in, switch the webcam, it works. No special, nothing, nothing needed. So I don't know, man. I would say since they people are still dumb enough to buy them, I mean, people like them, uh, just sell it and switch to Insta360. Never have any drama. Just completely get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I would just sell the GoPro and and get a a flat Insta360 because they're they just work <laughs> they, just, they just work with no no special drama at all it's kind of funny all right here's a blast from the past I used to make this every single freaking Wednesday I haven't done this forever so let's do it now <laughs> when we first started the whole um pandemic this is what I basically made every Wednesday for the longest time <laughs> Uh, 
It's 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 super what is Scott say? Uh I have oh I got I got it. They all work fine. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about GoPros that are just a pain in the butt. You know who probably can figure this mess out? Is um Victor. Victor likes playing with crazy stuff like this. All right, boom. So you guys, I told you guys about my old school secret trick, right? Whenever you are, um, whenever you're setting up for a guest, it might be in your best interest to put an image back there, um, just in case the the image, just in case the internet does what the internet does at times and it just drops off. Then you can have some sort of backup. You know what I mean? You can have an image there instead of a hole in your in your thing. Or the other thing that you can do is put multiple cameras there, so you can stack another camera behind. Um, maybe that's pulling a different shot from your location or something like that. And that also might be a good way to have a backup image. You just and so that whenever you start your stream, you don't end up with a hole in your stream where the guest's supposed to be, right? So I have no idea what I did with that image, but somewhere, I, there it is. I got it. I have it. It's right here. Oh, Scott's going to be mad at me for this. <laughs> we're going to take Scott and uh, we're going to put him in the, in the puka, as we say in these here parts. So take this camera. Come down here. I'm going to add a new camera. Bingo. Add a placeholder camera. I'm going to set this one to guess one. Okay? Pop it in the hole. That's going to be blank. Then I'm going to take a shape overlay, and I'm going to right-click on this guy, change it to squircle, put it right where this one starts and ends, and bigging it like such, and then throw this at the back. Bam. Then I'm gonna take this image of Scott and put it right there. Ooh, I, I should have left it on top first so I can see what I'm doing, right? So I never did it with the cutout version. I normally did it with a picture, but the cutout version actually looks better, okay? So I can take this picture, right, and line them up so I'm ready to go and then drop this right above that. So when Scott is on camera, Everything would be everything. But if something should happen, camera disconnect, internet, dial, whatever, you don't have a hole in your stream. And here's another thing. Sometimes when the internet is being stupid, just have them turn off their video. Just keep the audio connection, right? The internet will be able to handle the audio connection almost no matter what for the simple reason that um, it's, it's just a lower thing. So you see this all the time in sports, right? You see this all the time on the news. I'm going to do an uh, interview, and, you know, um, we're going to have her on. Oh, let me let me show you this real quick. Let me do this real quick. Um, I'm going to come back to you. Um, you know, we're going to do this interview, and they just only have a photo, and they put the voice over the photo, and it works just as good, right? Um Insta 360 works great underwater with no housing. How about that? <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and stop messing with me, Jeff. <laughs> let me add a placeholder comment overlay so I can adjust this guy to where you want to put it. Now, before I do that, let me show you one other thing. While you're building your scene, it's a pain in the butt. So you want to come over here, go to general, and turn off the automatically hide comment after 15 seconds. And then you're going to go to your placeholder overlay and adjust it to wherever you want this to shine. In this case, we're gonna stick it right above, you know, us, we're gonna call that perfect. And then I have it set up how I want it. You can come in and change it, make any additional adjustments to color. Actually, I'm gonna just pull a weird stack like that. Um, I also don't like the quarter rounds, so I'm going to make them all the way around. All the way around. <laughs> it's all the way around. Whoa, whoa, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Then you go ahead and put that back on. And then now when I go to add Jeff's comment, Jeff should pop in like right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Scott, we're going to need an updated picture. Uh, four years later, I know you look older because I look older. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I look older and black don't crack, so I'm going to definitely need you to send the updated shot. <laughs> anyway, so that's how you would set that up, right? Um, and again, you just make your frames, copy it all over, and then you're good to go. Now, one thing you could do if you want, I'll show you my library. Let me see if I can find this because it's been a minute since we're, we're kicking it old school. Let me check my, uh, my old Macintosh over here. Um, what you can do is add, I can't speak English today. Uh, you could add logo if you wish that, you know, if that's just something that you're into, you could easily pop a logo on real fast. Um, you can put these in a folder to make them easier to find. So over here on the side, I have this folder switch, right? So I like to press that. And then I'm going to call this host. And then I would stick in my text file. Boom. And then I would stick in my camera. And then if I delete that, it stays together. You see what I mean? And then you can lock those together. So then now, make sure the comment stays on top. I'm going to add another file, put guess. And then twirl the host one, close the second, pull it down to here. And then put in the title and that. And I'm going to stick in the extra parts, right? So that way, again, if anything happens, all's good in the hood, right? Um, actually, I kind of like even having a safety mechanism for the main camera. Let me do that as well before I lock these up. I think the, sec the safety mechanism for the main camera is a good idea as well because we all know your camera can like uh, disconnect, your cam link can do what cam links do, overheat, whatever. So I think it's a good idea to have that safety picture back there too. Uh, let's call it host BG. And then I'll put these back on so it doesn't look weird. All right, so now if I link this, this is gonna be all locked up and then we never have to worry about these kind of dramatics ever again. Now let me go put in the safety picture for my camera as well. Mm -mm -mm. I was going to make myself Jeff uh, for a second because just Jeff's picture popped up for me doing thumbnails the other day. Uh, let's see. Man, you know, you should put these in a better spot there, Doc. Okay. I'm going to take this JPizzy and hit the pencil. I have it cleaned out somewhere, but just not on here. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do it that way. That's going to be too hard. But I'll just use this picture for now. Um, if I try to gut the background, I, it's easier for me to just open it and express real quick and fix it. But we're going to call that that. And again, just drop it in right above the background. So should something happen to the camera, you're not like, you know, messed up and yeah i should take the time and go and throw it into um one of my hey i actually have one he's so dumb he's so dumb okay never mind never mind what i just said everything i just said run it back run it back i could do the same thing take that and bigging it like such it's a good idea yeah, that's about right. I'm slightly taller and a hell of a lot fatter than Scott. So I use that as a, you know, get it semi-correct, right? So now if something should happen to my camera, like we could totally do this interview, you know, saucy. Actually, in my particular case, I don't want to turn it off because if I turn it off, it's going to hide the, there you go. There you go. So it'd be like that. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't know what rich check your own volume because everything over here is is gravy everything is gravy uh, let's see I can put my camera back all right so now let's go and build our next joint ha la 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 right don't you think the safety images is a smart idea because yeah cameras all the time bro <laughs> like they just disconnect and then you'll be like asked out <laughs> and you'll be like oh my god what am i gonna do so i think i think it's a smart idea to build safety images in it'll really uh it'll save your bacon just in case 
Rich, why do you have a tennis? Oh, that's a ping pong thing. Oh my God, I was just watching the World Championships, and there's a 15 year old girl from Japan going against like the top like 30 year old um, girl from China, and they were having at it. It was so good. I was like, man, I would get smoked by these kids. And I used to play every day when I was in college in Japan. We'd be in a break room. Man, these kids are sick. I don't think I can play that good now. <laughs> anyway, let's just make a new scene. So in this case, we're going to drop on the old screen share overlet. Pingo. Pop it up here. Oh, we had a good thing in the group the other day. I'll bring it up in a second. Pop in a little camera. -er. I'm going to unambiguous that to about right. Cha. Listen, I always build mine. Uh left to right because this monitor is here and if i'm looking at this monitor it looks like i'm looking at that right your hands can't see what i'm doing i mean you can't face face can't see what my hands are doing so <laughs> when i'm looking at this monitor here <laughs> it looks like i'm looking at the frame so that's why i build left to right if i have to use this monitor for whatever reason then build right to left so for instance if I was going to do something and I know I'm going to work everything on this uh, this 28 inch uh, square over here, I would build it like such because I'm going to be talking this way. And so if I'm talking this way, all right, let me go ahead and put the browser in. It'll make way more sense because I have the browser over there. Bingo. Uh, this is too close to the edge. Don't. Sometimes if yours look like that, Check to make sure your browser isn't too close to the edge. You see a little white box show up. It's something that Mac OS does because Mac OS can only share what it can see, right? So if your browser or your window is half hanging between two nether, net, net, neither, other, what do you call it? Neither regions, nether regions, um, you, it's not going to work. And the other thing is if you, for whatever reason, you know, you go to remove a window to make it fit, you change the 16 by 9 size of it, then it no longer fits good, right? So now you go like that. Now you go like that. Bingo! So this way, if I'm looking at this particular side, because I'm working here and I'm trying to explain you guys, number one, make sure you go check out Squares TV, bookmark this joint. Um, uh, Michael is an amazing human being. He is a member in the ecamm group and he made most of these little apps and programs and stuff as an ecamm user in order to make life easier for ecamm so video pencil shoot which is like camo um beat sheet for people that need to design their shows in a certain way and then the delay calculator which i think he does for free but anyway so if i'm teaching from this side i'm gonna do it this way if i'm gonna teach on this monitor then i'll Flip, <laughs> flip, 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 flop it. Yo, listen, Mark. That reminds me of the um, that movie, right? Postcards from the Edge. Does that fit in the Katie them VHS category? Anyway, so now I got my things over there. Yes, there it is, Paul. Squares TV. Just, I just feel like we got to be supporting other Ecamm users. <laughs> <laughs> Get that Brady Bunch opening credits effect. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yo, LCD in the building. First of all, I was thinking about you last night. I was going to send you a text, but I realized it was um, super late here in Honolulu. I'm going to put it in the chat because I think everybody should see this. But when I saw this, the first person that came to mind was Laura. Listen. I am a hardcore Game of Thrones person, right? 100%. I saw this video that I don't know how I never saw it in my entire life, but you're talking like uh, Ian from Anthrax, Nuno from the stream, uh, Brad Paisley, uh, Rage Against the Machine, uh, 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 Tony was there. Like, listen, I mean, sorry, Tommy. It was the craziest thing, and they're doing inside a guitar center they're playing game of thrones and it was the dopest thing i've ever seen so uh maybe i guess i should have put what it is first <laughs> anyway if you're a guitar head uh homesick mac of you up in here you're another person who came to mind when i saw this 
And I don't know how, as much as I'm a Game of Thrones fan, I never saw this thing, but it was freaking phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. And even Dan Weiss, creator of Game of Thrones, he, I didn't know he could play guitar like that. Like, yo, it was crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So if you're a guitar head, go and check that out. Um, I can't play it here because we'll get in trouble. But, uh, yeah, it's super dope. All right. Hey, we got a plan. Listen, since Laura's here, what if we try to use our new microphones? All right, check this out. I mean, this is still the shore, but I'm going to show you. This is a move mic receiver. It's really cool. I'm just going to plug it in the side over here with this handy dandy cable. And then look, it says move mic receiver. Well, you can't see that because it's lighting up. It's lighting up straight from the streets. Took our time, took our chances. All right, let me go like this. Grab one of these little two hickeys, though. These things are so dope. They're tiny, which is my favorite part of it, is they're mad tiny. Boom, laugh two. Now we linked up. So, pin this to my my little thing here. And then, I'm going to switch it. Mm. Booyaka. Now y'all can hear we. Listen, I'm going to put both on and talk in stereo because I'm cool like that. <laughs> Boom. One, two. Wait, it didn't come on yet. Boom. Now I'm going to talk in stereo we. Now y'all can hear we. Listen, do I have the volume set the same? No, I don't. Let me set this one up. This one is at 11, the other one's at 22. But I'll leave them off by just a smidgen in order to give that je ne sais quoi effect. All right, I can move this out the way and put my headphones here so I can hear what I'm listening to. Oh, you dummy. <laughs> I set myself up for failure. Okay, I can't do that. Don't use the right angle cord. All right, give me one second. I'm going to fix this. My bad, people. My bad. better now i can hear myself yeah super stupid <laughs> there you go there you go now we're cooking with pan oh don't do that that's not the plan this is the plan now we are cooking with pan um yes jeff i have heard you play the guitar i have when i came to your studio the last time and i've seen all your awesome uh, guitar stuff, and you've played on streams. Uh, you played out when you first started live streaming. You would play out, which is cool. Which is cool. Yeah, dude. When I first saw that, I was like, "Bruh, that thing is crazy." I don't know how I didn't see that because the video is a couple years old. All right, maybe it's just to me having them both this close together sounds weird. Let me move this out of the way put it over here okay that sounds better <laughs> having them that close to each other sounded super weird um actually i'm gonna stick it on top of my little fuji over here stop moving all right there we go all right there we go hi shelly listen all the heroes are coming in the chat today boom 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 Oh, yeah, they do. It depends on what you're trying to do. Like, this is something that drives people crazy. And I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it first here on live television. The fact that your application does not see external mics is not the external mics company's fault in any way, shape, or form. It is the application. If you open up Swift and you go into Xcode and you start writing a little iOS app, most people just grab the microphone kit and just drop it into their program. Bingo, internal mic from the phone works, no coding. It is literally like taking an attachment like this and attaching the phone to it like that. Like that is the difficulty of programming that. To write code that says, read the port on the bottom of this, in this case, lightning port on my other phone, it's a USB port. 
to write code that says read this and then check to see if there is an audio thing connected, you gotta actually write code. But what everybody does is grab mic kick, drop it into their project, the internal mic just works. So when you plug in a device on a USB or lightning, many times your phone would say, is that a headphone on other device? And the reason why it does that is it needs the A set security settings so that you can see the little icon in the top that lets you know that you're being recorded, video or audio. There's a, uh, a uh, icon at the top in that little uh, digital island. There's also that, so that headphone thing comes up. Is it a headphone, another device? And it does that in order to let you know. And then, hey, I just got something from Sure. What the heck? Oh, that's Katie. <laughs> and then you also have to discover that port, figure out what the app is, figure out what the audio device is. You got to do some work. So most of the application people are just lazy and they never done it, right? So initially right now, if I were to take my MV88 and plug it into here, the Moment app understands it, Filmic Pro understands it, Blackmagic app understands it, most of the other apps don't. Why? Those guys are video apps, they know what they're doing. It will read the MV88, it's, it'll literally put the short logo on the Moment app, the short logo pops up. So it knows what Mike's plugged in. They took the time to do that work. Instagram, they don't give a crap they don't take the time to do that work. And so I've watched like 17 videos where people are like, oh, sure, it's dumb. They didn't make it so it works everywhere. Sure can't control that player. You should learn how this works before you say something stupid. You can't, sure can't do nothing about that. It's not their business. So what they can do though, is give you an app that guarantee works. So they did. They made a camera app that works. And what most people are going to use it for, I'm going to say this again. What most people are going to use it for is to record videos. And the app that Shore built is better than the native app. So just use it. It just, it's not even that big a deal. If that has been so misreported by people that don't know what the freak they're talking about, Oy, don't hit the mic. It, it drives me batty, but I, I, I'm not, I understand why you think that rich It's not your fault, but it's also not Shore's fault. That is the way that it's been written. Boom. You can, uh, I can change it to left, right output. Thank you. While well, getting live instructions from LD up in here. Uh, let me go back. Back, back, all right. Boom, 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 boom. Bingo. Bingo. Big channel left and right. Bingo. <laughs> oh, snap. Look at that. Now he's so cute. Now he's so cute. Now he's so cute. Thank you. This is damn interesting. All right, guys. Yeah, you should have more often. It's actually super cool, Jeff. <laughs> exactly right. You know, Jeff, she just grab your guitar. So, Jeff, she only sings on her um, Facebook stream on Sunday. She does like uh, sad songs or sad songs. Or sad songs. She's amazing, right? Boom. And then she sings really cool. She just took my heart pink. I love it. I think heart's pink. Yeah. This is another. I'm going to scoop down the sunshine. Yo, it's a twist. You see you. Um. I wanted to try that filming clamp, but that is really expensive. And then you add the carbine or hold it for SSD. Actually, uh, believe it or not, because of the quality material here, at first I thought about rigging my SSD direct. I'm really just going to use it on nano tape. Uh, nano tape is like really, really sticky tape, but it comes off and doesn't leave any residue. So I'm probably going to just clean the main thing. I'm probably just going to tap my SSD right here with nano tape. Also, because this is how you mean, you can just use dual tape velcro and then you can change it to whatever. So, yeah, that's the only way anything, right? And you know, like dark X10, I'm probably going to either nano tape it or whatever, because I don't want to put a, I don't want to put things. Is that, yeah, I forgot to that too. It's not standard Bluetooth. It is a very custom protocol, and it is sick. It is really cool. You can just go. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to point this out. I appreciate this. Um, Shoppiness, I can't control. That's internet getting somewhere. It normally works itself out. It's an error correction type protocol. But yeah, I can't really fix that. And I know you guys can't. We're all streamers, right? So you can help or point it out to the host. But 9 out of 10, all you're doing is messing with those. Because those are things about that. Is that what you're talking about? So just understand the host can never do anything about the internet. Ever. So start plugging, which I did all this. Um, but yeah, I, I don't care how much you're I told my LDFM, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I the rest of the time, freak out over it. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's the, you forgot to ace that time. I see, what happens, you got self, right? <laughs> oh, why are you broken right now? No? What is broken? I don't know what did I do. I'm going to do something. Yes, that's not me. It is buffering and speeding up, that's not me. I can see you guys, clearly. Uh, if it's, if it's buffering, you do have a buffering, you guys are not helping back in me. I got myself, I can't control it.
and reconnect. You probably shouldn't do these things live at the same time. Here, let me see. Let me listen to the stream. I normally don't do this because it's bad. It's real bad. Uh-huh. Uh, not YouTube Studio Ding Dong. Boom. I'm going to put this over here. And yeah, that sounds fine. Okay. Now we know we're safe. All right, we're good. We're good. Yeah, see, that was, see, it was probably not even me. Then. That means that it was probably YouTube. And again, like I said, this stuff happens, and it's not nothing the host can do, but it will definitely freak the host out for quite a long time. Let me mute this before I start listening to myself talk to myself. <laughs> that is how it's done. That is how it's done. <laughs> always. There always are. Always are eating. That is how it works. That is how it works. Oh. Uh. Get a screen grab. <laughs> no screen grab. <laughs> Put your lighters up. Oh, now I'm going to be thinking about that song all day. Now I'm going to be thinking about that song all day. Yeah, and uh, it, that, so if you want to know, like, technically how that happens, you're sending audio and video mucks together at, at the same time. And Ecamm encodes that into the digital situation, right? That encoded file gets sent to YouTube over the stream URL, and YouTube decodes that. In the middle of that, there's these frames, interpolation frames, that are designed to keep everything stuck together. Every once in a while, when a packet is lost, what happens is it loses that interpolation frame. So then what the software does on the decoder side is make a sophisticated wild ass guess as what frames go to what. And it takes time for it to catch back up. This happens in Netflix all the time. If, if you especially watch a Netflix in a hotel on a spotty connection, sometimes the show will like disconnect the audio from the picture for a second and then it'll come back. Or the picture will freeze and the audio will keep going and then it'll come back. But yeah, it just happens. Um, and remember, I live in the middle of the ocean. In the middle, middle of the ocean. You're not, you're not offended. You're not offended. <laughs> she don't care. But yes, L, L Clap is our, our resident shore representative. I just think it's funny because uh, this is sound weird. Like this is going to sound really, really weird. It's I wish that somehow, some way, shape or forms reviewers had to. I wish reviewers had to take a test. <laughs> that sounds weird, but I wish they had to take a test so they know what they're talking about before they review stuff. Because I literally watched five, six, seven, eight different reviews where people said stuff that was completely sideways. Not even a little bit wrong. Not even, you know, this is uh, 46 millimeters by 22 millimeters by 8.2 grams. They didn't even miss that kind of stuff. They went like, oh, it's Bluetooth. Calling it Bluetooth is disingenuous. It is Bluetooth, but it's not. It's not the standard issue uh, Bluetooth stack, like connecting your speaker to your computer. It's not, it's an own custom proprietary Bluetooth connection. And that's the way they should explain it instead of just saying like it's standard issue Bluetooth because that gives people the impression of all of the buffoonery that comes with standard issue Bluetooth. Standard issue Bluetooth has some weirdness going on. 
right? Um, and even then, like there's a big difference in the explanation between Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE. Bluetooth LE is relatively flawless. It just works. But the Bluetooth audio codec, yeah, it can be suspect at times. And I wish people wouldn't just claim it to be Bluetooth like that because they're missing the point. Now, the other thing, when it comes to saying something is Bluetooth, which is also a little bit of shady, there's two different things. Okay, so this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, right? Guarantee you, dime against two fat boys on a 15 Pro Max, this is Bluetooth 5.4, the latest rendition of Bluetooth. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is probably also Bluetooth 5.4, the latest edition of Bluetooth. But if I pull up an iPhone 10, it's probably on Bluetooth 5.1, maybe Bluetooth 5.2. Not the same. It's just not the same. So you cannot just say Bluetooth in general. Just like I, I people that are members of my community, I talked about this yesterday. This is a USB cable. This is a USB cable. And this one that Short sent me is also a USB cable. Don't tell Laura I said this. This I will throw away instantly. Because this, although it's a USB cable, it's a USB power cable. And it can transfer data really slow. Because it's designed to work with a receiver. It's not trying to work with a hard drive. So I know why they did it. I just wish people wouldn't do this. These should never get shipped out of any factory anywhere in the planet. Because inevitably, when you pack for travel, you're going to grab this and you're going to plug your SSD. I don't know what the cable is, but I have the cable for my receiver, for my move mic. So I'm going to plug my SSD into this and I'm going to attempt to move pictures across this cable. And it's going to take seven days because this cable is slow. This is a five gigabyte per second piece of crap cable. This is a 10 gigabyte per second cable. This is a 40. Four zero, five. So when I get these, I throw them away. I only carry these when I travel. I, even though I'm the skinny, whatever, I only carry these when I travel because I'm going to grab whatever cable I got. I'm going to plug in my hard drive and this will transfer the living f out of data. That thing I threw back there will not. So this is why you can't just use the generic terms because they're not generic terms. There's Bluetooth stack, there's Bluetooth 5.4, there's like USB 1, 2, 3, USB 4. This is a USB 4 cable, AKA it works as Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt 3. Uh, it doesn't carry the full Thunderbolt spec, but it carries 80% of it. So yeah, like it's a, it's a thing and I wish people that did reviews would do that, yes, and and Twist is telling you the truth. If it was this is an active Thunderbolt cable, it would be even better. But because except for my Mac stuff, I normally just carry these because Thunderbolt cables are 40 bucks a piece and these are 15. And they do almost the same thing, just not quite as fast at moving data, but 240 watts and 40 gigabits per second. It will do everything except something that specifically calls for Thunderbolt. When something specifically calls for Thunderbolt, this may or may not work. It depends on what part of that stack, that stack they're looking for. Um, so yeah, like you gotta be careful when you listen to these reviews, don't just take one or your favorite, cause I even watch your favorites say dumb, stupid stuff all the time that's not correct. It's not like, yo, listen, <laughs> the, I'm gonna say something really mean. And I hope Scott's still here because Scott will be here to back me up a little bit because Scott's an old school audio guy too. The amount of Gen Z slash young millennials talking about audio specifications that have no clue what they're talking about is really high on YouTube. And a lot of the guys are talking to you about film oriented stuff in comparing it to a mirrorless camera. A mirrorless camera is not a film camera. It does film like things, but some of those stuffs don't match. And they'll be saying stuff that doesn't just make a sense. The amount of people that think you can just slap a LUT on an ugly picture and make it look cute is because your favorite YouTubers are selling their LUT packs, making people think that if they just slap this LUT on their footage, it's going to look like theirs. They never bother to mention the white balance. They never bother to mention that they just took a standard look from something else and changed like two sliders and repackaged it and sold it. Like, 
is part of the practice of shady. So you got a whole generation of people of our ilk looking for the right answers that are getting led down the wrong path by these, you know, quote unquote, really successful YouTubers that don't necessarily have a clue of what they're talking about. So you got to be careful when you do your reviews. <laughs> That's super funny. Danny, you're fired. <laughs> Danny is fired. Uh, yeah, we covered that already. Yeah, you should. 100%, Eden. 100%. 100%. Hmm. I don't use the... I don't... I, don't, I do have a I do have an MFI certified cable. Now that I think about it, it came. It, I bought it with the MV88 Plus, so I do have one, but I don't use that. <laughs> right, right. Listen, man. Listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. I'm just saying, bro. Because like, like I look, Curtis knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Tom, Tom is pretty up there. Tom has learned a lot over the last couple of years. But yeah, it's it's super funny how many people talking audio stuff that just have no freaking clue what they're talking about. It really kills me. Oh, by the way, these are condenser mics, not dynamic, just so you know. Most most uh, labs like this nature are. Will, e will it be possible in the future for ECAM to import your own transitions? You can import your own transitions right now. 100%. You just got to go get them. Uh, I don't have any on my machine. Maybe. Let me look. Let me look. I might have some. I, I don't do... Listen, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I'll just show you. I'm not going to tell you that it's unnecessary. Everybody wants it, but it's unnecessary. Your audience doesn't like them. I will tell you that. Let me see. I have some on here. What was the name of that? The stream elements, that's what it is. A-P-E-X. Did I call it Apex? Yes. Nerd or Die, Apex, Stinger. There it is. Uh, overlays. All right, this, let me just download it real quick. Look, I'll show you. Here's a here's one I bought from Nerd or Die eons ago. Now all I gotta do is drag it, put it right there. It works. It's like, this has been there, and I, these are from like, uh, I wanna call it 2000. So yeah, it totally works. You can just get your own stingers now. I will highly suggest <laughs> under <laughs> under um, bit of caution that you don't. <laughs> like, I streamers all think they look cool. No, they don't. <laughs> they look cool for the first time you use it. If you have to go between that scene and this scene and this scene and this scene and this scene, and every time you go back, it does that, People are going to want to punch you in the neck. <laughs> so they're, they're cute for like a second. Uh, I almost want to put it down to, in my DJ game, the, the reverb or the sound system. Rude boy, 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 boy. Like, it was cute once. The guy that does it like between every song is not cute. <laughs> so the problem is you now have to build five different scenes because you need one that has it on and one that doesn't. And then you got to make sure you pick the right one because, yeah. Anyway, but you can, they've always been able to drag them in. They've been there for years. Uh, is if you're using a video editor. Yeah, the same thing. You can just make your own. These were from Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die or Stream Elements or whatever. There's tons of programs out. As you guys know, I've, um, I've built my own, like tons of my own just doing it in Final Cut, you can do it in Final Cut, you can make them in Canva, you can make them in Adobe Express, uh, yeah, I have tons of them, but I don't know, 
I just, I just think that I, they're completely not necessary. I, th- I know people think it looks cool and they think it adds value. Your audience doesn't care, bro. Unless you're doing a show about making transitions, your audience does not care whatsoever at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> they just don't. So if you made that as a straight cut and they got the same information, that's what they care about. Nobody cares about it. Um, yeah, it's funny. The stuff that I think we do to impress other streamers is completely different than impressing your audience. I think the key element is impress your audience. Always put the audience first. That is the answer. As we say in these parts, every time your brain wants to say algorithm, switch it to audience. If your audience is down, then you're fine. The algorithm does not exist. Your audience exists. Boom, this is good. We got Q&A sessions popping off. What else you guys got? Oh, I have a meeting. So I got time for like two more questions and I'm going to run to a meeting. Paul probably already left and went to the meeting. (laughs) Anyway, LD, thank you for sending this. This is amazing. Um, I'm having a lot of fun playing with this. And I'm going to go back to this regular mic for a second. Whoa, now we're here. I'm going to show you why. This is what's so cool about having this little thing. Boom. I just like the fact that I can just stick it on my little thing like here. Boom. It's good to go. So then when I take my phone and pop it out, I have the USB thing in here, so I had to take this off. Take my phone, slap it in his little cagey cage. Boom. I am set, folks. I am absolutely set. Like, I can go to town. This particular is the older phone, so I need my lightning cable. But I take the lightning cable, pop it up in here, and then I have a little stick. It's a Arca Swiss. Wrong direction. No, it's not working. Get in there. Barbara Streisand. There you go. Listen. This is a dope rig. Sound quality good. Picture quality good. Just clip these joints up. Boom. This particular one, I just stick in my iPhone cable. I mean, it's just, it's flavorful. It's flavorful. It's just absolutely flavorful. So, yeah, I can't wait to do some running gun setup like this. And I only bought this clamp because it's specifically for doing vertical content. And I'm going to clamp it to the top of a camera rig. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this thing is dope. Barbara Streisand. Do, 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 do. Sorry, don't ask me why that song popped in my head, but it just did. <laughs> yes. All right, gang. That was uh, more Q&A than demo, but <laughs> whatever. No, I'm not looking for that cable. I'm, I tell you, man, as soon as I get those, and I know why the manufacturers do it because, you know, people like light and small. But I, we anybody that deals with cables, light and small is not the answer. You want cables that stay connected. So I don't like those little flimsy cables. I normally take all of those and throw them away as soon as I get them. <laughs> and then switch to something uh, better. As a matter of fact, for this particular um, mixer, not mixer, what do you call this thing? Um, receiver. I have these flat 40 gigabits per second, uh, 240 watt flat ribbon cables that I use that are just banging. Eden, I'm glad you know that song. So many people will not know that song. That song is the bomb. Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, guys, listen, listen. I hope you figured out something today. I hope you learned something. Uh, we're going to have all the funds 
And if you didn't get a chance, if you're curious more about understanding the microphone, make sure you check out uh, last week's episode of Stream Show. I have my full review video coming out very soon. I'll be doing a bunch of shorts and stuff. I'm um, just letting you hear the various sound quality. I am going to take it to Podcast Evolution and shoot lots of content with it. So that'll be cool. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're just hanging out there. And uh, yes, <laughs> Mark is never going to let me live that down. OK, <laughs> a couple of weeks back, I went to go move my um, my USB hub over here. Sorry, Thunderbolt hub. And I pulled the Thunderbolt hub, Thunderbolt cable out the side of it by accident. <laughs> and the whole stream just went, Doop! it was super stupid. And Mark would never let me live it down. Thank you, Mark. We're friends like you who needs an enema. <laughs> All right, gang. Katie is screaming. We got a meeting. I'll see you guys next week. I appreciate y'all. You guys rock. Love you. Peace out. Cow fam, Mr. Name of the Sham.